Hey everyone, how's it going? So it's been a while since I've done a challenge run, so I figured I would just do two. Ah, uh, that's kind of a joke. The real reason I'm doing two in one video is that Nidoran male and Nidoran female, while there are important differences, are kind of really similar. I mean, their base stat totals are the same, although the stats are distributed differently, and their movesets are nearly identical. The level up moves are a little different, and Nidor and Male can learn one extra move. But other than that, they're pretty much the same, so it just didn't make sense to do two separate videos. And instead, what we're gonna do is compare the two Nidoran. I'll be showing Nidoran Male first, followed by Female. Since, although I want to do it as a competition, I felt like it would be disingenuous, because right from the beginning, I thought Nidoran Male would be better, and in the end, that is still going to be the case. And the reason for this is twofold. One, look at those stats again. In a solo run, yes, defense and HP are important, but speed and attack are special. They're a lot more important, and Nidoran Male is optimized for speed and attack, while Nidoran Female is optimized for defense and HP, and in competitive Pokemon, that gives it a useful niche. In this game, it just puts it at a bit of a disadvantage since it's our only Pokemon. But in addition, Nidoran Male has a massive advantage in the early game, due to the differences in their level up moves. Nidoran Male definitely in the early game has a better move pool. Number one, it knows Horn Attack, which is a base 65 power normal move, which it learns at level eight. Nidoran Female gets Scratch, which is slightly more powerful than Tackle, a whole five base power more powerful. And yeah, that's a pretty big difference. So Nidoran Male already has the advantage, but if we look at the successful Brock battle, you do have to still level up quite a bit. And against the Geodude, you just attack with Horn Attack. The slightly higher speed means I get critical hits at a slightly higher rate than Nidoran Female. But the big difference is against the Onyx. When Onyx uses Bide, we can use Leer, which Nidoran Female doesn't know. And Leer will lower Onyx's defense, and because Bide can take several turns, we can end up defeating the Onyx rather quickly, and it's simply about leveling up to a point where a Geodude doesn't knock you out, and with my stats, Nidoran Male was able to do this at level 16. Nidoran Female, on the other hand, is going to have a much tougher time, not only because it doesn't know Horn Attack, but because it has Growl instead of Leer. This will be advantageous against the Geodude. Since it uses Defense Curl so often anyway, we're going to be taking back far less damage if we just use 6 Growl. In fact, the Geodude will only do 1 HP of damage. That's excellent. And that should leave us with a ton of HP for Onyx. Unfortunately, if you try at level 16 or 17 or 18, what you'll find is that Nidoran Female doesn't outspeed the Onyx because it has much lower speed. And I reset time and again to get as good DVs as possible. Obviously, they're not going to be identical because that would be unrealistic. But in both cases, they had above average speed. So we're going to have to level up all the way to level 19. And because we don't have Leer for the Onyx, it becomes a lot more stressful. Sure, we can use Growl, but Onyx does no Screech, which kind of counteracts it. And Scratch does such little damage that in fact, we're going to end up having to use our other moves, namely Tackle, which can miss 5% of the time. In fact, I'm not sure if you've seen it yet, but I actually missed twice in a row, which is amazing. But yes, in the end, I do defeat the Onyx, but to compare time at this point, Nidor and Male started the Brock fight at 42 in-game minutes, Nidor and Female at about an hour 30. So Nidor and Female starts off with an hour disadvantage. However, it does make up a little bit of that time, and there's a couple reasons for that, but for now, the biggest reason is I'm going to be at a bit of a higher level than Nidor and Male. Overall, to make this as fair as a comparison as possible, I tried to use exactly the same route, and so I didn't battle any extra trainers on the way to the rival, and so because of that, Nidor and Male will be at a much lower level, making the rival fight a little more difficult. In fact, I actually had to go to Cerulean Gym and battle the two trainers there, one of whom I usually don't battle, so I could have enough experience points to level up, and it made rival number two somewhat consistent, although I still had to reset a couple times. Now against Pidgeotto, I get some of the worst luck you could imagine. Quick attack, then I horn attack. Sand attack, which hits, that's bad. Critical hit quick attack, and then I miss, which allows him to get another quick attack. And at nine HP, I'm not gonna win, right? Well, Abra's a one-hit KO, it doesn't attack. 
and Rattata does an attack. Horn attack is almost a one-hit KO. Had I leveled up a little bit more, that would have been better. And surely Squirtle's gonna knock me out with Bubble, but it doesn't use Bubble. It does use Tackle, but it does almost no damage, so I'm able to just eke out a victory against Rival 2 at level 22. Not bad. Nidoran Female, on the other hand, starts the battle at level 23, and I have to use a bit of a different strategy because I don't have a horn attack and my attack is lower. I instead use a couple of tail whips, which I do learn, so in the end, I do get a Leer-like attack. With no misses, that makes Pidgeotto a 4-hit KO, and it does use Sand Attack and take away quite a bit of HP, although not as bad as Nidoran Male. Abra doesn't attack, so not a big deal. But then against the Rattata, you can see how much less damage I do with Scratch, and I get a miss, and the Rattata uses Hyper Fang, leaving me with only 18 HP for Squirtle, which is still double of what Nidor and Male had. Now, the strategy is the exact same as Pidgeotto, two Tail Whips and two Scratch. Of course, I miss Tail Whip number one. I get a Water Gun, one more hit, and I'm knocked out. Okay, well, that was lucky. And okay, you're not going to attack me anymore. Pretty lucky battle, all things considered. Now, with neither Nidoran does it make sense to battle Misty here, because on the SSN, we get Body Slam. And this is great for Nidoran Female. I mean, it's good for Nidoran Male, too. It's a base 85 power move, which is still an upgrade, plus a 30% chance to paralyze. It just doesn't represent as significant an upgrade on Nidoran Male, but it is going to make Rival 3 a heck of a lot easier. I didn't battle anyone else on the SSN other than the one trainer you need to to get Body Slam, and I still outsped Pidgeotto, one hit KO with Body Slam, although it was a critical hit, so I'm not sure if it would have been otherwise. Raticate, I still outspeed, but it's not a one hit KO. It hits me with the Hyper Fang, but I knock it out the next turn. Now, Kadabra with Confusion is very scary. If I outspeed, it's not a problem. I don't. That's something I'll have to be aware of a little bit later, but thankfully for now, Body Slam is a one hit KO. Now, with War Turtle, it's not even a two-hit KO, but Wartortle barely does any damage. And all in all, a fairly easy victory. But the fact I was outsped by Kadabra is an ominous sign for things to come. Now, in regards to the Nidoran female version, it's pretty much the exact same thing. Since now, we're comparing apples to apples getting to use the same moves. I only do half damage to Pidgeotto, meaning Nidoran male probably wouldn't have been a one-hit KO. But another thing we need to take note of is the Raticate outspeeds me this time. And I'm a level higher. This perfectly illustrates why base speed is so important. Didn't really matter. The Kadabra also doesn't attack, and the War Turtle was a 3-hit KO had I not gone the critical hit, and it barely did any damage. But you can see Nidoran female to be at the same speed as Nidoran male, obviously, is going to have to level up more. And as the run continues, that is going to mean a lot more training for Nidoran Female, which you think would cost it a ton of time. Let's see if that ends up happening. At this point, I would normally go fight Lieutenant Surge, but I can't do that since I can't use Cut yet since I didn't defeat Misty. So let's go back to Cerulean City and do just that. Now, Misty is a good example of why real time factors into my overall rankings, because in the interest of in-game time and level, I'm not going to level up enough to outspeed Starmie, and it's a three-hit KO. Both of these are really bad, because Starmie likes to get a lot of critical hits. In fact, Staryu isn't a one-hit KO either, and it can attack, which is bad, but it's the Starmie. If it gets a critical hit with Bubble Beam, pretty much the battle is over, unless Misty acts just totally irrationally, which can happen. But overall, the time I did win, it ended up being a Bubble Beam, a Water Gun, and a Tackle. So one of each, but if you get two Bubble Beams, even a Tackle will knock you out, especially because you've probably already been hit by Staryu. Overall, this was pretty annoying, and if I were to do this run again in the future, I probably would want to level up a little bit more before Misty. However, for Nidoran Female, this actually wasn't necessary. Staryu is a one-hit KO, and then against Starmie, I barely take any damage at all. I mean, getting a critical hit was pretty clutch. But hold on, j -Rose. Didn't you say Nidoran Female has lower attack? And it's just about at the same level. How the heck was Staryu a one-hit KO? What's going on here? Let me explain. 
when you defeat opposing Pokemon, you don't just gain experience points, you gain a hidden thing called stat experience. I've mentioned these before. You only really ever know about these when you feed vitamins to your Pokemon, but you actually gain them all the time and they turned into EVs in Generation 3. Now, all you need to know for the purpose of this video is that all those Caterpie, Metapod, Pidgey, and Rattata that I knocked out to get to level 19 really make a difference and end up actually resulting in Nidoran female temporarily having higher attack than Nidoran male. This will eventually start to even out and Nidoran male will take the lead again, but I definitely was quite shocked how much easier Misty was with Nidoran female. And speaking of which, in this next section, Nidoran female actually has a much easier time. I struggled mightily with Nidoran male, so much so I actually had to change my route around. But I first went to Rock Tunnel figuring I would just go back and fight Lieutenant Surge later. He does have Thunderbolt, which is useful, but for now, I didn't really think I needed it. And that's not why this is so difficult, Cubone was. And it's going to be easy to see why as I show you a bunch of these failed attempts. Cubone is a 3 hit KO if I don't get any critical hits, and I faint in 2 hits. The math is pretty bad on that one for me. If I do make it past Cubone because Bone Club can miss, or maybe it uses something else, the Slowpoke just knocks me out immediately with confusion, and so I actually had to backtrack battle some more trainers, and then I decided it was a good idea to battle Lieutenant Surge. For the record, because I couldn't do these runs simultaneously, obviously, I had to do parts of one first followed by the other. I saved a little bit of time with Nidoran Female by just going to Vermilion City right away, but not as much as you'd think. Thanks to Dig, I can usually just get back to whatever Pokemon Center I want to fairly quickly. But full disclosure there. Anyway, now let's talk about Lieutenant Surge. I actually lost my first attempt with Nidoran Male. Since Voltorb used Sonic Boom and it did outspeed me, I outsped Pikachu, but Raichu used back-to-back -back Thunderbolt. Raichu will attack randomly, so the chance it uses Thunderbolt twice, kind of unlikely. So that was a pretty bad turn of events. The next battle, I got far more reasonable luck, so it was pretty easy. But once again, Nidoran's poor speed really coming into play. Now, Nidoran Female, I also lost my first attempt, but hey, hey, look at that. Nidoran Female is actually at a lower level. There is a very specific reason for this, which we will talk about in just a second. But once again, I got bad luck against Raichu in that it got a critical hit Thunderbolt. But you can see that Body Slam now is doing a little bit less damage with Nidoran Female. Raichu was a 3 hit KO versus a 2 hit KO. I would end up losing a couple more times, one of them due to a Generation 1 miss, which is a 1 in 256 chance. But on the winning battle, you can also see how much damage Thunderbolt is doing. Their specials are identical, but due to their DVs and the level difference, Nidoran Male didn't take back as much damage. Either way, the strategy, as you can see, is just use Body Slam and get sufficient luck. That won't continue for the rest of the run, that's just these two gym leaders. But now it's time to talk about how I finally got past Cubone. And for both Nidoran male and Nidoran female, ended up just getting a little bit of luck. All you need is one Bone Club to miss and Thunderbolt, because if one Bone Club misses, then you'll have more than enough HP and Slowpoke should be a one hit KO. Slowbro has very good specials, Slowpoke does not. So Thunderbolt should be a one hit KO. And here's a good time to talk about how both Nidoran have pretty poor move pools. You think they have good move pools, because Nidoking and Nidoqueen do, but their pre-evolved forms, they really get the short end of the stick. One weird thing is while Nidoking and Nidoqueen can both learn Ice Beam, Nidoran female and male can only learn Blizzard. Why? That doesn't even make sense. Whatever. Now, here is the part I was talking about that Nidoran male struggles against mightily. One of the mandatory trainers in Rock Tunnel is the hiker with two Geodudes and a Graveler. Now, I'll actually start with Nidoran Female because the reason it's not as bad for her is that she has Growl. And what these Geodudes and Gravelers like to do is use Self-Destruct, but they may not use it right away. And while it would take too many attacks to use Body Slam, using Growl for a few turns really offsets the amount of Self-Destruct damage. 
And although it did take a few tries, eventually, Nidoran female was somewhat easily able to make it past. For Nidoran male, not so lucky. We don't have Growl, and although they have different move pools, Nidoran male doesn't learn any sort of move that would be helpful. And it just takes way too many body slams, even if you use Leer. The problem is it only takes one turn, and it's basically a random 1 in 4 chance that they use self-destruct. How many leers and body slams it takes to knock out not just one, but three Pokemon that can do this just wasn't going to happen. You would need a ton of immobilized by paralysis. It's it just very unlikely. So what I did instead was using some of the rare candies and by leveling up some more, got myself to level 36. And at level 36, Nidoran male learns the only move or TM, I should say, that is unique to one of these Pokemon in Horn Drill. But with Horn Drill, although it takes luck because it's a 30% chance to hit the opponent, and you also only have five power points, but you can survive a single self-destruct, even the Graveler, although that one is preferably not the one you get. However, the five power points make it a bad idea to use Horn Drill against all three Pokemon, so what ended up happening when I was successful is I got self-destruct against the first Geodude. The strategy against both Geodudes was to use two Leers and two Body Slams. Because of my level, that will knock it out. And then against Graveler, assuming I've already been hit by a self-destruct, which is pretty likely, I need to hit with Horn Drill before it uses self-destruct. While I did miss quite a few times, I was thankfully finally able to get past the Graveler and get past this hiker with Nidoran Male. And now, look at that, Nidoran male has a bit of a lead over Nidoran female. So let's see how that plays out moving forward, and we're going to skip ahead to Giovanni. I mean, there's not much else to talk about in Rocket Hideout. Now, with Nidoran male, I didn't need to do this by any means, but I decided to use Horn Drill. Now, in all honesty, my original strategy was actually to go back to Lavender Town or to Erica's Gym, level up to level 43 and use double kick but since i have horn drill might as well use it although we'll be deleting it soon and i might as well address right now why that is you see i like to plan for the elite four we can reset any of the other battles so it's not overly important to be consistent but it's important to learn strategies and how the pokemon functions in battle and if i use a move that i will not be able to use during the elite four since it's a 30% chance, even with all the elixirs in the world. Without saving in between, it's just not going to work. Plus, Agatha has ghost types. Better get used to strategies that don't rely on it. Plus, there are some more useful moves I can learn. So, I won't be using too much of Horn Drill going forward. But as you're going to see when we get to the Nidoran female portion, it wasn't actually necessary. Now, to make up the level gap, I battled the trainers in Erika's gym. Don't worry, as you're going to see, I'm going to need to level up a whole bunch later on anyway, but I wanted them to be as similar as level as possible so I could make the most accurate comparison. Turns out, all you need to defeat Giovanni is Reflect. Yeah, Reflect is a move that a lot, a lot of Pokemon in Generation 1 can learn, and it works differently than how you expect. You think it lasts for 5 turns and affects your whole team? No, it affects one Pokemon and never goes away. So, pretty cheap. And because of that, none of Giovanni's Pokemon can really do enough damage to be too much of a problem. And so even though I do, well, very little damage myself, since I haven't learned Double Kick yet, I'm just barely able, with 14 HP, to knock out all three of Giovanni's Pokemon only using Body Slam. So that goes to show you the Horn Drill strategy was kind of unnecessary, but fun. I mean, how often am I going to get to use that? But now it's time to battle what is going to be arguably the easiest gym leader in the entire run for either Pokemon, since it's the grass gym and we're poison types, and even though we don't have poison moves, all of Erika's best attacks we resist. Victory Bell was a two-hit KO with Body Slam. It went for Wrap, but it only lasted two turns. Somewhat surprisingly, Tangela was a two-hit KO with Body Slam, and it went for Constrict, so I have plenty of HP for Vileplume. Now, Vileplume will be a three-hit KO. It puts me to sleep and then starts using Petal Dance. It's starting to really add up, and I'm not waking up so fast. Thankfully, I eventually do wake up. Coincidentally, as the Petal Dance wears off, 
Vileplume hits itself in confusion, and I knock out Vileplume with the next Body Slam. First try victory, not too bad. Now, Nidoran Female, it's kind of similar, except Body Slam is doing a lot less damage now. Victory Bill once again goes for Wrap, and I decide to go for Bite, because I'd rather get the 30% chance of flinch, and it's going to be a 3-hit KO regardless. I get a critical hit, so that was pretty lucky. Unsurprisingly, Tangela is also a 3-hit KO with Body Slam. On the second term, it goes for Bind. Lasts a few turns, but I'm able to knock it out, still with plenty of HP left for Vileplume. And once again, I get just outstanding luck. It's going to be a 3-hit KO, even after the Mega Drain. Vileplume puts me to sleep, and I stay asleep for far longer. Thankfully, it's paralyzed, and only because it isn't able to attack twice that I'm able to knock it out due to how long I stayed asleep. So, simultaneously pretty lucky and pretty unlucky. Either way, both Nidoran got past Erika on their first try, with some bad luck thrown in. Not too bad at all. And that means they're both probably in pretty good shape to face rival number four. And I don't even have words for this battle with Nidoran male. I again go for Horn Drill just because I think it's hilarious and I miss, get hit with Sand Attack, and I'm just going to spoil it. I end up not taking any damage for the remainder of this battle, even though the Execute puts me to sleep. Not every Pokemon is a one-hit KO, and yet at no point, even though there were several opportunities, do I take any damage. This is why Generation 1 is both the most easy and the most difficult version. You have way less tools, no held items, no abilities. Trust me, that makes it a lot tougher. But then you get battles like this and you're just like, man, this is way easier than Ditto. Now here's the one instance where the roots diverged. I actually battled the rival prior to Giovanni with Nidoran Female, so that's why its level is lower. I do take damage in the battle from Pidgeotto, a quick attack, and of course, that's the only damage I would take in this battle, at a lower level. Yeah, rival number four is not what we'd call a challenge. Now, Koga was also pretty easy once I figured out the right strategy, and that strategy will be using Reflect and taking advantage of the fact that the Weezing likes to self-destruct. Unfortunately, and I usually don't encounter this, Koga is supposed to be a huge troll, relying on accuracy and evasion moves, some of my least favorite things to do in these runs. So I set up Reflect on turn one, he goes for Smokescreen, and Muck also sets up Minimize, but thankfully that doesn't end up having too big of an impact. The second coughing does get quite a few extra hits in because it uses not one, but two Smokescreens. However, that does trigger the badge boost glitch, allowing me to knock out the coughing reliably in two hits, which is kind of nice. The Weezing goes for X attack, and then self-destruct, which was probably the worst case scenario. However, because the other Pokemon didn't get any critical hits or damage me too much, I survive on 20 HP and I've made it past Koga with Nidoran male. Now for Nidoran female, I was having a little bit of a tougher time with coughing using smokescreen. So what I decided to do instead was to set up reflect against Muck and just knock out the coughing as soon as possible. And one reason coughing was a little trickier is that it's a 3-hit KO as opposed to a 2-hit KO with Nidoran Mail. Now Muck was a 5-hit KO. I set up reflect turn 1 and then I misclick and use reflect again. Koga goes for X attack which is pretty annoying but thankfully that's the last time Muck would attack me. And I don't miss with any of my body slams which is pretty good. Against coughing number two, unfortunately I do get hit with a smoke screen and it's still a three hit KO. And so I don't have nearly as much HP as I did with Nidoran male. However, Weezing immediately goes for self-destruct. It only does 40 HP. Don't forget Nidoran female does have higher HP in defense. So I am able to beat Koga, albeit it took probably double the attempts with Nidoran female as it did with Nidoran male. After I defeated Koga, this is where I had to make a decision what I want to do next. Nothing else is all that easy. I originally did try to battle Rival Fival, but wasn't having any luck. And I recognized that one move I could use that would be super useful is Blizzard. Arguably the most powerful move that Nidoran can learn. Now I can get Blizzard right after I defeat Koga. There's nothing stopping me from teaching Surf and surfing to Cinnabar, going in the Pokemon Mansion, and then picking up Blizzard, which is exactly what I did. 
Unfortunately, this cost me a little bit of time since I usually get Lapras for Surf and Strength, so I had to go slightly out of my way to get the Good Rod and fish for a Pokemon, so that cost a little bit of time, but I think it was well worth it since Blizzard made Rival Fievel a lot easier. But since I was on Cinnabar already, I decided to try and battle Blaine, see how that went. Blaine's AI is notoriously terrible, loving to use Super Potion at full health, and I did struggle, so with Nidoran Female, I would switch up the order and battle Rival Fievel first, which I think was the right call, but unlike my vision, hindsight is 2020. so let's talk about the battle with Nidoran Male. Now, Growlithe will spam Agility because it's a Psychic move and I'm a Poison type, so I can just use Body Slam and get rid of Growlithe pretty easily. Against Ponyta, I get some pretty absurd luck. It misses with Growl. That's a weird Gen 1-2 thing, but it is intentional. Heals with the Super Potion, then misses with Fire Spin. It would be a 2-hit KO, but because of the Super Potion, it was more. But I don't get attacked. That's pretty good going into Rapidash. Rapidash also misses with Growl, but does end up using two Tail Whips. Takes three hits to knock out the Rapidash, but... As a result of it using Tail Whip, the Badge Boost glitch activates and I have more attack. Not intentional, so no need to go into detail what the Badge Boost glitch is right here. And then my luck against Arcanine is also pretty absurd. I don't want to see Takedown or Fire Blast, and I just get Ember. The chance of that is really low, and that's why with Nidoran Female, I did Blaine second. This just felt like a really lucky strategy, and because I'm doing these runs so often, I've started to just accept when I get good luck and move on, but optimally, I would beat Rival Fievel first, and then move on to Blaine. So rather than talk about Nidoran Female just yet, let's move on in Nidoran Male's run to Rival Fievel, and then we'll talk about these two battles with Nidoran Female, and you'll see the contrast. Now, the battle starts out alright. Blizzard is a 1-hit KO, the critical hit doesn't matter. Growlithe is a 2-hit KO, even with Blizzard, and in Generation 1, I forgot this. Fire doesn't resist ice. Weird. Anyway, Execute is a one-hit KO, and then Alakazam outspeeds, goes for Psybeam, it doesn't know Psychic yet. I get a Paralysis from Body Slam, and I'm able to knock it out. Then I get super lucky with Blastoise, it decides to go for Bite after one Thunderbolt, so I'm able to use the second Thunderbolt and knock it out. Quite a bit of luck there, and the strategy for Nidoran Female is virtually identical. One important difference is that Pidgeot is a 2 at KO, but thankfully I outspeed and it doesn't go for Quick Attack turn 2, so not a big deal. Growlithe, still a 2 hit KO. And I opt to set up Reflect to try and make Blastoise a little bit more consistent because it has some physical attacks. Execute is still a 1 hit KO with Blizzard, and then Alakazam goes for Confusion. It still knocks me down to about 20 health, but I get the Paralysis once again. This was an intentional part of the strategy. If I don't get that Paralysis or a critical hit, I lose. There's about a 40-ish percent chance of that happening, and I know that's not great, but let's finish the battle and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Blastoise, I go for Thunderbolt. It's still a two-hit KO. It goes for Bubble and lowers my speed. Kind of the worst case scenario. Thankfully, goes for Withdraw. I'm able to knock it out with Thunderbolt. Now... Talking about why did I opt for luck versus leveling up? If I leveled up, a lot of the battles, including Sabrina and Giovanni, would become trivial, and it just is boring for me. And it's not like I don't reset for Brock or other battles earlier in the run. I don't see the huge deal if I have to reset later in the run to avoid excessive leveling up, so that's my logic. Anyway, we still have to talk about Blaine as Nidoran female. A massive difference is that since I've already beaten Sylph Company as Nidoran female, I get access to the copycat and thus can teach Mimic. And Mimic makes Blaine a heck of a lot easier. And so on the first turn, I'm gonna Mimic Agility. Growlithe will only use Agility or Heal with Super Potions and that'll allow me to outspeed everything. In addition, since it's modifying my stats, the Badge Boost glitch activates and all you need to know is that every stat which badges boost, in this case, attack, defense, and speed, get a 12.5% boost every time my stats are modified. And honestly, it actually makes very little difference in this battle. I mean, Rapidash is a two-hit KO, but I also get a critical hit, so it would have been a two-hit KO anyway. And then I level up, which nullifies the badge boost glitch. So I still have the normal boost from agility, but not those extra glitchy boosts. And Arcanine, I pretty much just keep going for body slam and praying for no fire blast or takedown. I eventually get a takedown, but it's already been paralyzed, and on the final turn, 
it cannot attack due to paralysis, and yeah, kinda lucky here too, but the truth of the matter is, if I really wanted to make this easy, I could have just gained a bit more experience so that I wouldn't have leveled up in the middle of this battle, and thus I would have been doing a heck of a lot more damage to our canine, but doesn't matter, we win, and that leaves just two gym leaders left, Sabrina and Giovanni. And unsurprisingly, Sabrina is going to be the toughest gym leader in this entire run. She is fast, she has psychic moves, it's not going to be a good time. And I'd have to level up an absurd amount to outspeed her Alakazam, so I'm going to have to try and win without doing that. How will I accomplish this? With the badge boost glitch, let me explain. Thankfully, I'm able to outspeed Kadabra with Nidoran and Mail, and Body Slam is a one-hit KO. Now, Mr. Mime only has one attacking move, Confusion. It also knows Barrier, Light Screen, and Reflect. I'm going to attack first turn because it can use Barrier or Reflect, and it'll still be a two-hit KO when I attack next turn, even if he uses either of those. I need Mr. Mime to cooperate and not attack me. Light Screen would be best. It's paralyzed. Perfect. Now, I mimic Barrier because that is how I'll set up the Badge Boost glitch, but I'm going to do it against Venomoth. Mr. Mime is just too scary with Confusion. On this turn, I get Light Screen, so this was the best Mr. Mime scenario. Knock it out. And now, I'm going to set up barriers against Venomoth, and I want to see Leech Life, not Psybeam. Leech Life is still classified as super effective, so Sabrina has a pretty good chance to use it. It's kind of 50-50. Now, in order to outspeed Alakazam, I need to set up two barriers. I do get Psybeam on turn one, but I get Leech Life on turns two and three. Body Slam is a 2-hit KO, and now I just have to knock out the Alakazam in a single hit, but unfortunately I don't, however I get Psy Wave, so I'm able to win. Now, the truth is, if I leveled up a little bit more and used a third barrier, I probably could have made this part a lot less luck-based, however I'm fine with how this one turned out. Ninoran Female, on the other hand, is going to have a little bit more trouble because she's slower, and because of that, I need to level up far more than I did with Nidoran Male. In both games, I fought some trainers in the gym, but I needed to do some extra leveling up using some of the trainers I didn't battle earlier, and I'm at a higher level than Nidoran Male. And this is sort of why I couldn't make them a comparison, because from here on out, Nidoran Female speed is going to be such a huge hindrance that she's always going to need to be at a bit of a higher level to do what Nidoran Male can do. Now, the significance of level 52 is that was when I was able to outspeed the first Pokemon, Kadabra, which is mandatory if you want to win this battle. So I outspeed, and it's a one-hit KO. Against Mr. Mime, the same strategy. Body Slam, turn one, in anticipation of Reflect or Barrier. Mimic, turn two, and hope you never get Confusion. I get two Barriers, which I was worried would end up making it a three-hit KO, but it didn't. That was pretty good. Now I have to set up three barriers against Venomoth in order to outspeed Alakazam, and so that just gives it one more opportunity to use Psybeam. Thankfully in this battle, I get not a single Psybeam, but it's not like I got perfect luck. I did get a couple critical hit leech lifes. I almost forgot to use the third barrier. That would have been bad because Alakazam would have outsped me and it would have been very unlikely that I won. However, another thing to note is even with the higher level in the third barrier, Venomoth is still a two-hit KO, and I was almost certain Alakazam wouldn't be a one-hit KO, but it was much closer, leading me to believe that Nidoran Male could have had a much easier time. Thankfully, I get Reflect, the best-case scenario, and am able to knock out Alakazam. And this leaves us with one final gym leader, Giovanni. And with Nidoran Male, I could not do it at my current level. It just wasn't happening. And I think I battled Giovanni I don't know, like six or seven times. And the biggest problem is Doug Trio knows Dig and it'll always use Dig because it's classified as super effective. It outspeeds, does a ton of damage, and I simply do not do enough even with Blizzard. And Blizzard still has a 10% chance to miss, which is nice, but it's still possible. And it wasn't, I got to ride on once. It wasn't close. And so I decided to battle a bunch of trainers. I've been putting this off, but we're towards the end of the game. I know at the Elite Four, I'm going to need to level up a bunch anyway, so might as well do it right here. I'd already leveled up a little bit more with Nidoran Female, so might as well have Male catch up, although I got a little carried away and leveled up eight times. And after you do that, the battle looks totally different. 
And in this battle, I actually got terrible, terrible luck. First Blizzard hits. I go for Body Slam just out of curiosity. It was my first battle. I want to see if it would want to KO. It doesn't. Giovanni goes for Guard Spec. But then it was a speed tie. I didn't realize this. So Doug Trio actually goes first the next round. Hits me with Dig. Still does extreme damage. However, I actually don't get damaged for the rest of the run. Even though against Nido King, I do miss one of the Blizzards. But I don't get attacked. So overall, this battle was a lot scarier than it needed to be. Had I just used Blizzard against Dugtrio, assuming it didn't miss, which is only a 10% chance, I would have had tons of HP, and the miss against the Nido King wouldn't have been too bad. As for Nidoran Female, this is one of the few battles in the run where I can say that defense made a massive difference because the Dugtrio's dig just didn't do nearly as much damage. And it goes to show how impactful this was, because Nido Queen, I got a crit, but it wouldn't have been a one hit KO, and neither was Nido King, but it used Tackle. Great. Why does it know that? Even Rhydon, with its awful special, wasn't a one hit KO, but it goes for a one hit KO move, which can't affect me because I outspeed. And so I ended up winning on my second attempt, which is pretty great. But as I say in every video in this challenge run, this was the preseason or the regular season. It's the season in sports that doesn't mean anything. You know we're a playoff team. You know we're making it. But the question is, are we going to win the championship? Or I like hockey. Are we going to win the cup? And since the playoffs are on the horizon, we want to make a good impression in our final regular season match. So I'm going to stick with Nidoran Female because now she's at a lower level and I battle rival number six. Like I did with Blaine, I can just mimic agility and spam it against Pidgeot because agility is classified as a psychic move. So it will only go for agility because it's super effective, air quotes. And that gives me speed, which is important, but also raises my other stats, which is useful. Although I do really need it for the speed because Rival also has an Alakazam. Once I'm done setting up agility, Thunderbolt's a one hit KO on Pidgeot, Blizzard's a one hit KO on Rhydon, Body Slam is not a one hit KO against Growlithe, but it also will spam agility because it's a psychic move. So I wasn't worried. Blizzard is a one-hit KO against Execute. I outspeed Alakazam, of course. Body Slam is not a one-hit KO. It uses Psybeam, but because of the badge boost, my special is more than decent to absorb that. And so I have pretty decent health going into Blastoise. I'd prefer not to see Hydro Pump. I'm not sure if I would survive. Not a problem. I get Withdraw. Thunderbolt is a two-hit KO. And Nidoran Female is qualified for the playoffs. What about Nidoran Male? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be fine. I mean, it's the exact same strategy, so no need to narrate. The only thing to point out is I do level up in the middle of this battle, so I don't have badge boost for Alakazam. Of course, I still have speed because the regular boosts from agility are still in effect, but it's not a one hit KO with Body Slam. Had I not leveled up like Nidoran Female, Alakazam would have definitely been a one hit KO. And yeah, I lose what, like 20 or so HP in this entire battle? Nidoran male is looking pretty good. And then the Elite Four just completely annihilated. And what was it about the Elite Four? Was it Lorelei? No. Lorelei, I had a pretty consistent strategy that worked pretty much from the get-go. Was it Bruno? <laughs> yeah, it was Bruno, of course. Uh, no, no, it wasn't Bruno. In case this is your first video, Bruno is terrible in red and blue. No, it was Agatha. And basically, we'll talk about her more when we get to that battle. But the long and the short of it is, you need to outspeed her or it just becomes a completely luck-based mess. And as I mentioned when we were talking about Horn Drill, we do not save between Elite Four members in the solo run series. And this is to avoid luck-based strategy and make this as scientific as possible while being totally unscientific. But, you know, we're trying. Anyway, I need to level up a lot. A lot, a lot. We're talking about level 77, eventually. Because like I said, Lorelei was pretty easy. So for Nidor and Male, what I'm going to do is I'm only gonna level up into the 60s, but I will level up right after her battle and that will let me maximize the usefulness of rare candies and level up into the high 70s. So let's talk about Lorelei. She's incredibly easy because, well, Dugong won't do anything. It will just spam rest because I'm a poison Pokemon. 
Cloyster should be a one hit KO with Thunderbolt, but there's a 1 in 16 chance I miss the range. I do. Laurelie uses Super Potion, so it's not a big deal. And here, Slowbro doesn't know a Psychic move. It will just spam Amnesia. I'm going to mimic Amnesia both to make the Slowbro faint a little easier and to make Lapras not a problem whatsoever. Slowbro is still a 2 hit KO, so that's not an issue. Now, Jinx, I should mention, I wouldn't outspeed at this level, but because of the badge boost glitch, all those amnesias will allow me to outspeed Jinx. I know it's weird, amnesia increasing speed? What world are we in? Anyway, it is a range, but I hit it. So Jinx is a one to KO with Body Slam, Lapras is easily a one to KO with Thunderbolt, and we have defeated Laurely with Nidoran Mail. Now, rather than switch back and forth, I figured it would be a better experience if we just stuck to one Nidoran at a time for the Elite Four. So moving on to Bruno, there's really not much to say. The strategy, if you can call it that, I mean, first, you see me use all my rare candies. And that's not really for Bruno. It's for Agatha, but we're not going to level up after the Bruno battle. So it just wastes experience points. In order to be as efficient as possible, it's better to level up before the Bruno battle. Anyway, ready for this strategy? I'm going to mimic Harden, use all the five remaining power points, and then one-shot everything with Blizzard. Wonderful. I mean, there's really no more strategy to it than that. The only way you could risk damage is if the Onyx decides to attack you, which is rare. And Blizzard could miss, and it did against Hitmonlee, but I still don't get attacked. One thing I should make clear, Blizzard in Generation 1 has 90% accuracy. I said 10% chance to miss. In every other generation, it's 70 but yeah, this whole conversation, while completely irrelevant, is far more interesting than the Bruno battle. Now let's talk about Agatha, because she was awful. I mean, Agatha is always terrible, but she can use Hypnosis and Confuse Ray, and you just hit yourself in confusion. Agatha has standard AI, so she won't just spam Dream Eater and Hypnosis, which would also be bad for the record. But mixing in Confuse Ray is actually kind of worse. It's, it's just a bad situation. That's why we need to level up. I needed to outspeed not one, but both of her Gengar. And this was finally the level where I was able to do that. Thankfully, I have useful stat calculators where I know exactly what speed I need to be at and what her Pokemon speeds are. So that's pretty great. But now that I have enough speed, it's still not a guaranteed victory, but it's a heck of a lot more consistent. So turn one, I go for Blizzard, even though it can miss because of the potential freeze chance. I don't get the freeze, but I get a critical hit. It's still not a one hit KO. Agatha uses a Super Potion. I go for another Blizzard and Gengar switches out. That's amazing. That means the first Gengar will be a non-factor in this battle. Golbat is a one-hit KO. Pretty sure I could have used Thunderbolt, but I used Blizzard to be safe and buy Golbat. Now the Gengar comes out and I'll use the far more reliable Thunderbolt. And that's two Pokemon down. Haunter is also very trolly, but it's a two-hit KO. And thankfully I get Nightshade, the absolute best case scenario. Looking pretty good. Arbok can use Glare. That's awful. I'd really like not to see that. I see Super Potion. Perfect. Thunderbolt, thankfully, still does enough to knock it out. And we have just one more Pokemon remaining. By the way, the fact Agatha uses Super Potions here is pretty ridiculous. But now we have Gengar. Still knows Confuse Rate, but it doesn't know Hypnosis, so it's not nearly as scary. I get Nightshade turn one. I use my last Blizzard. No Blizzard misses. Pretty good. Thunderbolt turn two. It's going to be a three-hit KO, even without Blizzard. I get a Dream Eater, which won't work because I'm not asleep. And that is the Agatha battle. Goodness, what an annoying battle and required tons of leveling up. But in the end, well, you just needed to be at a super high level. There really wasn't much more to it than that. And uh, now we can take a nice little break. Well, well, I'm not going to, but we could because Lance is a joke. Generation 1 AI will always use the move it thinks is super effective. So we're about to knock out the Gyarados with a one-hit KO Thunderbolt, and we win. Because we can mimic agility, both Dragonair and Dragonite will just use agility. It's super effective. No, it's not, but they think it is, because it's a psychic move. And that means I can set up all the agilities, use Blizzard, even if they miss. Because I used agility, I can outspeed Aerodactyl and one-hit KO with Thunderbolt, and yeah, I mean, Dragonite can use Barrier, but that has no bearing on this battle. And beautiful. That is very anticlimactic, but I promise you the final battle is not. In fact, I could have saved around an hour 
if Alakazam didn't exist, because Alakazam is so speedy and terrible, but we have a few more Pokemon to get through, agility for us to mimic, so we're gonna actually have to use legit strategy, no badge boost glitch here. Let's talk about the final battle. So, we're gonna Blizzard Pidgeot. At my current level, it's a one-hit KO, so that's nice. Now, at level 78, I do outspeed Alakazam, but it's not a one-hit KO, goodness. It does use Psychic, but thankfully I tank it, but that is not great for the rest of the battle. I have to now knock out four Pokemon on 60 HP? Yeah. So now I need to pray no Blizzard miss. I don't get one on Rhydon, pretty good. Now, Arcanon can be pretty scary because it knows Takedown. Of course, it uses Leer and Roar? Why does it know? I don't care. I don't care. Gen 1 is fun. So, down goes our canine. We have Executor to deal with, and it has massive special, so it's not a one-hit KO with Blizzard. It goes for Hypnosis, which is awful if it hit. Thank goodness it didn't. And I knock it out with Blizzard, and that's it for Blizzard. I didn't miss a single time in this battle. Very, very fortuitous. But Blastoise, a single Hydro Pump, will knock me out. And after I use Thunderbolt, I do get Withdraw, and I win. Not the most satisfying victory, I'm gonna be honest. I'll take it, don't get me wrong, I still have like 40 more of these to do. But yeah, Gen 1's gonna Gen 1. However, Nidoran Female is gonna have a much more difficult time due to its lower speed and lower attack. So the real question is how much more leveled up will Nidoran Female need to be to do this exact same thing? Well, funny enough, because I have more rare candies, they actually start at a level lower. And because of that, combined with Nidoran Female's inferior special, uh, the, it goes pretty much the same. Some minor differences. Cloyster is a two-hit KO, but uses Super Potion, so not a big deal. Slowbro is a three-hit KO, so to save time, literally no other reason. You can just use Thunderbolt first, then three Amnesias, then Thunderbolt turns it into a two-hit KO plus the Amnesias. Jinx is not a one-hit KO with Body Slam anymore unless you get a critical hit, which really doesn't matter. You can get put to sleep or frozen, that sucks, but didn't happen. And Lapras is still a one-hit KO, pretty good. Bruno, literally the exact same strategy. We're gonna use Harden, and then we're gonna use Blizzard. I'm also gonna be using all my rare candies. I mean, you can see I'm doing that right now. So that will help for the later battles against Agatha and beyond. I actually do take damage past the first Onyx, as you're gonna see. I miss Blizzard not once, but twice, so you may have thought, oh, j -Rose gets too good of luck, and I should comment on that, and especially these solo runs to make these videos not an hour long, and I know, I know, I want an hour long video, sure, but I don't feel like editing 53 hour long videos, and, and frankly, because the runs are all kind of similar in certain ways, I don't think they need to be an hour long, unlike Ditto or Magikarp, which are just so totally different than any other run you would see that there's a lot more to discuss. But I have rambled for long enough. We have made it past Bruno and are prepared for the most difficult battle other than the champion, Agatha. Now, I do make a mistake here. Thankfully, I get back-to-back -back Nightshade from the first Gengar, but after my second Blizzard, it's unfortunately not a two-hit KO, but I meant to use Thunderbolt. Instead, I hit A just a little too quickly and used Blizzard. Thank goodness it hit, but it's usually best to save Blizzard for later in the battle. Golbat is still a one-hit KO, which is good because it knows both Confuse Array and Supersonic, and being confused is pretty much a reset. Of course, just having said that, I use Blizzard and get confused by the Haunter. Thankfully, on turn one, I don't hit myself in confusion, and I knock out the Haunter. But now there's a good chance I get paralyzed by the Arbok. Thankfully, again, don't hit myself in confusion and use Blizzard. It goes for Acid. Okay, best case scenario by far. Don't hit myself in confusion for the third straight turn and go for Thunderbolt. All right, I actually think I have a chance here. Can I snap out of confusion, please? And uh-oh, I miscalculated. Gengar number two outspeeds me. Uh, that's not good. And with that Nightshade, we have almost no HP left. I use Blizzard, but it's gonna be a three hit KO. One more Nightshade and it's over. And of course, I get then Toxic and Dream Eater. So, at the end of the day, probably should have leveled up a little bit more. That was my bad. And I guess I can just talk about Lance very quickly. It's the exact same strategy. There is no difference. It worked pretty well. And since we're still a poison type and we can still mimic agility, 
literally the only way you could lose this battle is if you get a 1 in 256 chance miss against either the Gyarados or the Aerodactyl because no other Pokemon can attack you. So I, I really like my odds of winning this battle with Lance, but now we have to defeat the champion. And we have Worst Special. We know we're not going to outspeed Alakazam. How is this going to work? I mean, Nidoran Male, due to its superior attack, it did pretty well, and most of these are special attacking Pokemon. Am I gonna need to do this all over again? Let's take a look. First turn starts out the exact same way. I use Blizzard, it's a one hit KO, and I outspeed Pidgeot. Alakazam outspeeds me, goes for Psychic, no special drop, which is nice, and I get the Body Slam. It's not a one hit KO, but it paralyzes. Now, full disclosure, I was trying to get a 1-hit KO, anticipating I'd be hit, and the fact they didn't get a 1-hit KO was very bad. I would have had to have trained a lot more, and yeah, I guess it's just kind of good fortune that it worked out this way. Rhydon is once again a 1-hit KO with Blizzard, but for Arcanine, Blizzard actually will do more damage than Body Slam, so I go for Blizzard. It looks to be a 2-hit KO. It goes for Leer. This should make it definitely a 2-hit KO, and I miss the range, and it uses Takedown. Oh, no. All right, so this run is just about over, but might as well play it out. Why not? I get the exact same luck with Executor. Blizzard hits. Hypnosis misses. Blizzard hits, but come on. All the Blastoise needs to do is attack. Any attack, and I lose. You know, unless that attack misses. In which case, I win. So, I had the 30% chance to paralyze and the 15% chance of Hydro Pump missing. Okay, you know what? Whatever. We have finished these Nidoran runs. And we can tell that both these Nidoran overperformed, that I probably should have leveled up a little bit more. And had I not gotten really lucky at certain points, the time would have been worse. My real time was towards the upper end of what we've had, of course, excluding like extreme outliers like Abra and Pidgey. So in terms of where to put them, they're going to go in the second to last tier. Now I'm going to place Nidoran Male above Eevee since it was level 78 and its 8 hour 2 second time was quite a bit faster. However, Nidoran Female was slower, both in in-game and real-time, and considering the fact I did this run twice, that actually gives Nidoran Female a massive advantage over Eevee, and for that reason, it cannot go above it. But this video has lasted almost an hour, so I'm going to thank you guys for watching. We are almost a third of the way done, if you can believe it, the Red and Blue Solo Challenge series. So that's pretty awesome, and I'll see you guys again soon. Take care.